Sorry, I wanted to scoot forward. Um, I wanted to tell my birth story. Um, I'm trying to get back into this whole group of vlogging again now that I'm starting to feel better. And um, I have a huge list of things that I want to get done. I have a two week postpartum um, for me and for Jackson. I have um, a little Joey's review and some review on some of the diapers, which I'm in love with. Um, I have my breastfeeding pumping story. Um, things like that, so, what's up with the side? Anyway, so I just want to do my first story for you. Probably won't be that quick, but we'll see. Um, so if you guys know, I had gestational diabetes, and, um, they wanted to, I had my doctor struggle with whether doing a C-section or a induction, um, worried about if Jackson's going to come out vaginally or not. But she ended up deciding that she wanted to do a, uh, um, an induction at 39 weeks. And so on Thursday, May 3rd, um, I was 39 weeks and I had to be at the hospital at 4 o'clock in the morning. It wasn't very fun. I didn't get much sleep the night before. I kind of just laid in bed and was nervous. Um, both my other kids, I went naturally and it was pretty fast. So I was really nervous about, you know, the postmortem contractions and things like that. Um, actually on the way to the hospital in the morning, I almost threw up in the car, which is weird for me. Um, but I was really nervous, really, really nervous. Um, so we got there and they told me it would take an hour to get me all signed in. And it happened to be about two and a half, three hours later, they finally got the Pitocin going, and they checked me, and when she checked me, she was like, good lord, where's your baby? And she was reaching, she could not feel him, he was so high up, and um, so they started the Pitocin, and I was on it for about two and a half hours, and the doctor came in, and she wanted to check me, and she was concerned because at 38 weeks when she checked me, I was four centimeters dilated and I was at a negative one position. Now, if you guys know anything about um, what that means, is like if compared to my, I have a horrible drawing. So if this is your cervix that they're feeling, anything up here, you're going to go up is negatives and down is positives. So positives on the way out. So as the baby's coming out, you're going to be like a plus one, plus two, plus three, and so far as it comes out past your cervix. And negatives are like negative one, negative two, negative three, and four, and five, and six, and it goes up for, hello, Minnie, for how far, you know, into the birth canal we go. Now, um, so it was a negative one, which means that his head was right below, right above where the cervix is. And when the doctor, when the nurse checked me at when I was um, starting my Pitocin, I was at a negative seven. And that really concerned my doctor. So when she came in to check me again, there was no change. She said he was just like, his head was just bobbing around and he, he was not engaged. I had been having a traction for two hours. I was still um, four centimeters. I wasn't uncomfortable. Didn't ask for after or nothing. I was just, um, they were fine and nothing serious. Um, but because of the fact that I had spent a week from my 38 week appointment to my induction in 39 weeks, having contractions three to four hours every night. I was walking, I was having sex, I was doing everything we could try to get to go natural. And um, after all of that, he pops out of the birth canal. She was very concerned that this was a sign that he was too big, that he was trying to come out. He was trying to come out and couldn't fit and just kind of suctioned back up and popped out. So she decided at the last minute to go ahead with the C-section. Now, the C-section came with many complications, chances with me, because I am overweight and all my weight is on my abdomen, and I'm so short. I'm, almost, I'm barely 5'3", and um, all my weight's in my stomach. 
and so that's so many layers and tissues and fat that she would have to cut through. That would have caused the um, recovery process. She was under the impression that she was going to have to cut the incision when she was sealed up, and I would have to go into the hot into her office um, every day for a week and have the packing removed and have it repacked so they can actually heal from the inside out. And um, went through, I mean, she's sitting on her own for 20 minutes just going through complications like that. But she believed that he was not going to come out. And um, I really trust her. And she's really, I mean, I know in the world today that there's so many inductions and there's so many C sections just for really no reason. She is not the type of doctor to do that. I've said in many videos on how. She isn't, she's not, she's one of the doctors that when you complain about pressure, just smile and says you're pregnant. Wait till you go in labor. You know, she's not that. And the fact that she's even considering it is huge to me, and I trust her. So, um, I went for it. She comes back, so you know, the open room's open right now, which um, um, they prepped us. They took me to the operating room, and I had a spinal, I didn't have an epidural, um, which was horribly painful um, because I could not arch my back over enough for him to get in between the vertebrae. They were like pushing down on my head trying to get me over but I also had a huge water sack that the baby was in. They said it was like almost twice as big as it should be and uh, I could not arch over enough so he kept getting bone when he was trying to get the spinal in and that was horribly painful. Once they did it and they laid me down and strapped my arms down and brought my husband in, I started laying there and I started thinking to myself, this is absolutely insane. I am laying here wide awake with my stomach open. How weird. It was just a really weird thought. It's still a weird thought to me. Um, so things started going off. Time went by pretty fast. This was like an hour, an hour and a half. Um, my main issue was that my arms were strapped down, and because of the medication for the pain, or the you know, numb me, I was so itchy. Like I kept asking my husband to itch me up. I remember that, and he'd be like. It was like these light little itches, and I was dying. Like my face itched so bad. Like I just wanted him to like start like rubbing my face. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> um, no, and suddenly it was like I'm laying here, and all of a sudden they're like, "Oh my God, look at all the hair!" And next thing you know, she's like, "You can stand up, Dad," and he stood up with a cold mouth. And it was cool because he was a took them right over to the table right here to where I can watch them, you know, take their scores and everything. And we made, um, he was born at 9.28 a.m. on May 3rd. And when they first weighed him, he was 10 pounds, 0.5 ounces. So he was 10 pounds, half an ounce. And um, they ended up cutting off more of the vocal cord because the doctor cut it like a super long. So they cut that off and he ended up weighing exactly 10 pounds. Um, I don't remember what his APGAR score was. I remember him saying that I think he scored like a 7 or an 8. He was having, I remember him getting him to cry was a little bit longer. He was like, they were rubbing and patting a lot. He'd cry a little bit and then he would just stop and I'd get him going again. But as soon as I had him, I started getting the nauseousness. And I remember the anesthesia and I said, nope, it finally caught up with you. And then I threw up. And you can't do anything, so they just hold the tray there and suck it out of your mouth because you're throwing up. Horrible. Gross. Ugh. But, um, then they, all in all, they sewed me up and moved me into the, into the, post, the post operation room or whatever it's called, the triage. And um, we did skin to skin for like an hour. And a nurse, and things went well. And um, next thing you know, I was still itching like crazy. So they ended up giving me some Benadryl for my itching afterwards. And then that just wanted to knock me out. And so then I had people, then we moved into um, 
the postpartum room where we were going to be staying. Um, and people started coming to visit. And we were laying there, and like my eyes just rolling around. And my kids came, and um, a bunch of people came, and I was out of it. I don't remember much of it. Because I was in and out of sleep. The Benadryl plus the pain medication just really knocked me out. It ended up moving me into a private room, which, thank God, I couldn't imagine having to share a room after having a baby with all of the bodily fluids you're dealing with coming out of in every area of your body. Um, not only dealing with your crying baby, but someone else's crying baby. Horrible. So they end up moving me into a private room because the hospital is so empty. And um, also because I know my doctor is very demanding and she did, likes her patients watch closely. And they always told me that the private room is the ones where they watch it closely. So I moved to a private room. Um, I was up walking around the next morning and fully pain. I would have a vaginal delivery any day again over a C-section. It is by far one of the most painful things ever. <laughs> and then I even do a natural birth for that matter. Um, you can't get up and down. You can't even like scoop in a bed. I mean, I couldn't cough. I couldn't laugh. Um, everything. It was horrible. I had massages on my legs to keep me from getting blood clots. I, um, I don't know. I went for about four days. They offered for me to go home after three, but I decided to stay the extra day. Um, it was at least that it was up to me. Um, mainly because I knew once you get home, no matter how hard you try to um, lay there, I know that, you know, it's something things you just do things yourself. So I knew that if I, at least when I'm in the hospital, I don't have any excuses to get up. And I have people wanting to get me, and to do things for me. But the last night in the hospital was horrible because I had the nurse that was in every couple of hours wanting to do full exams, making sure, I mean, checking my incision, checking my pads, you know? And it's like, really, I've been here so many days. Most of the nurses don't even do this. It's like, give me a break. It's no way. Trying to do that thing with, you know, the full exam to the Whatever. So, they came home, and um, I ended up the first night home when going to the bathroom and stood up to a pile of blood all over the floor. It was wonderful. Not really. Um, called for my husband in the plane on the couch um, with a towel while he took care of the baby because I was out to feed. And um, thankfully I had been um, pumping, so he was able to feed the baby. And um, he came over and cleaned me up. It looked like my incision had happened a little bit. Um, he cleaned me up and I had to go to the bathroom again by that time. Um, this time when I stood up to the bathroom, there was a pile, puddle of fluid, just clear fluid on the ground. But he would clear it too. Yeah, um, he ended up calling the doctor. Um, and come to find out that I guess that that's pretty normal because of my signs, but they didn't do any packing, which is great. You don't have to, you didn't have to go into the hospital, or into the doctor and have the packing done. She just was able to seal me up, but because of that, it left a lot of room for fluid to build up, and so that's where he needs to lay out. Um, I spent a day on a couch with towels underneath me and like a garbage bag underneath, and I was soaking through full size towels like every couple of hour, like an hour, hour and a half and the towel would be soaked from drainage. So gross. Um and then the next day I kind of felt like the incision was like needing more. So I made a doctor's appointment and I went in. Um to find out it's all normal and I am healed now so 
things are going pretty good. Um, I got the drainage stuff that he had for the doctor. And um, he just said that they just got to let it drain. If it, doesn't, if it doesn't stop draining, if it does stop draining, then it's just going to be held up inside you and then it's going to cause infection. And then I will have to have it packed and we'll have to start over. So um, things went pretty well. I stopped draining. I am now two weeks postpartum and we'll have to get into that video in my two weeks postpartum video, but that's my birth story, and I love my baby Jackson, he's the best baby, he is a great sleeper, um, he's a loud crier when he's hungry, but he only cries when he's hungry, um, he's eating really well, we are breastfeeding something, pumping, uh, yeah, we'll have to go into that in another video too. And this is going to give you a quick little shot of it. He's over here in his little mouth. If you can see. I can't even see it. Hold on. Say, oh, it's dark in here. But there's my baby Jackson. <laughs> and just for fun because she's looking really cute. There's my candy. And there's my bed milk. Anyways. That's it, guys. That's my birth story. Put you back. Yeah, like I said, more videos to come. I am um, getting back in the ball now, so I got lots I want to do. So keep following. Have a good.